Let's try this again, shall we? Welcome to the show, everybody. There is a game going right now, but luckily it doesn't have anything to do with uh, streaming stuff. Phoenix playing Milwaukee. As we speak, Phoenix is off for two days after this one. The Bucks are off for two days after this one as well. So you weren't adding any of them for this game, and you're not dropping them after. The rest of today, however, you do want to be abreast of. So quickly, let's scroll through the board, make sure we know what direction we're going, what direction we're coming from, and we'll go from there. Your worst schedules today, which is the way we're going with this thing. Uh, I like to start with the worst. We'll work from there to the best. Worst schedule is the Charlotte Hornets, and it's like it's not even close. Well, I guess it's close because some teams are also bad. Hornets have one game over six days starting today. They're off today and tomorrow. They play Tuesday, and then they're off for three more days after that. Yikes. Uh, the Lakers also another back into a terrible schedule. They've got one game over five days, as do the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, one game over five days. Thunder, the worst of those two. Nobody's coming close to Charlotte's horrible schedule, but the Thunder are off for three days today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So as we look at these teams, and there is sort of like a, a third place, like a distant third, but they're still in there. The Rockets, the Pelicans, the Knicks, they've got one game over four days. Probably you don't need to drop, uh, especially because the Pels go into a four-game week. So not a huge problem there. The Knicks actually play tomorrow. So if you're going to drop them, you'd probably want to do it on Tuesday when they go into a slightly lighter schedule. Uh, Rockets, that would be one you might consider because they're only into a three-game week. And if you have any fringy players on that club, that would be the time to consider moving on from those dudes. But really, focusing on kind of the top ones there, the Hornets schedule is just so bad that they're almost there's almost nobody on that team that you absolutely must hold through this next little stretch because it's a two-game week for them on top of everything else. Legitimately, I don't even know if you need to hold on to Miles Bridges, who's generally been playable all season long. Aside, You know, there's like a one-week stretch where he wasn't as great. Uh, but, like, if you wanted to hold until Tuesday, you could do that because then they have only one game over five days the rest of next week. That might be the way to do it. You don't really get to front-load all that much, but if you're not desperate for an extra games played today, that would allow you to just basically say, okay, well, next week I'm going to get one out of the first two days, and then I got to move on. And the, legitimately, after Tuesday, there's really nobody on the Hornets that you need to hang on to uh, if it's your finals week. If it's not your finals week, you try to hang on to Miles Bridges. But again, nobody else. Not kidding. Not Mitzich, not Mann, not Miller. Nobody over those last five days is good enough to warrant holding if your league comes to its conclusion, uh, and even if it doesn't, I think you're 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 talking about Bridges and probably Miller are the only two that you try to find a way to sort of wiggle through. Um, everybody else is a no. The Lakers and the Thunder. Uh, neither one of these teams has many streamers, so I don't think we have to worry about much. But for the Lakers, you'd you'd think of somebody like a Rui Hachimura. But again, you might as well just hold them through Monday and then drop for the three days off after that. For the Thunder, Lou Dort. Josh Giddy, Case and Wall, these are guys that maybe got picked up at some point, but their schedule hasn't been good before this. So I'm guessing, much like with the Lakers, nobody really was going down that streaming path. And then again, if you really wanted to get into the the, two, the teeth of it, Houston with two days off today and tomorrow, if you really need to maximize things, uh, that would be a spot where you could maybe get off of. Oh, uh, well, certainly off of Landale because he wasn't really worth exploring to begin with you're holding on to freddie van vliet you're holding on to jabari smith jr especially while he's playing center now jalen green's been oddly good but he's someone that i would consider moving off of uh in nine cat format other formats that's a sort of a different story uh Amin thompson who we like a lot especially on the roto side probably someone you could abandon ship on for the streaming side just for this sort of one game and four day stretch but again the those last three teams i mentioned i, I don't know if like what did I say? Houston, New Orleans, New York Knicks. There aren't that many. You can probably just kind of roll through it. I don't think there's a whole lot you need to do there. Anywho. Um, so those are the worst schedules. Best schedules coming up right now are the Celtics, who start a five-game in seven-night stretch. The Pistons, who have six games in nine nights. Uh, and then a pretty big drop-off. You got Miami on a back-to-back 
that also would go a three and four or four and six if you wanted to stretch it longer. And then the Atlanta Hawks, who just have the back to back. Let's take a 10 second break here. We'll drop in. Uh, we'll let YouTube drop in some ads and we will let our other partners drop in some ads. And then we'll give you the names that you should be looking at with these best schedule scenarios. That's what's coming up here in just a matter of seconds. I'm realizing, of course, that uh, YouTubers never got a chance to see the streaming calendar um, that was meant to go up there. But uh, my child knocking me in the head with my poster board behind me and then making a bunch of noise. And, and look, I'm, I, I, they've done so many shows over the years where my kid always popped into them and they're always adorable. And all I asked was for a couple of seconds of like, if you wanted to come say hi, that's all fine. Just please don't like bang around behind. That was it. That was it. Feeling frustrated. I want to do this show like two hours ago. Anyway, my apologies to my child. My apologies to all of you. I got frustrated. And uh, you guys heard me. What was I? I think I growled. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll do some editing for the folks that are hearing that after the fact. YouTubers and Twitter uh, viewers, you guys got the full experience. Uh, by the way, those that are watching on uh, the TV version of this, please do follow me on social media at Dan Vespers. This is a hard time of year to maintain your following. A lot of people are like, all right, I guess I'm done with fantasy basketball. I don't need to follow this guy anymore. But I actually really do appreciate it. This is a cool time for me to pick up a few folks that are just kind of tuning in at the end of the season, trying to fight for their playoffs. We're doing some stuff, sort of having, we're doing, trying some things here. Uh, I've never done a streaming show like this every day the way we are, but. We do our best. Um, okay, so quickly here, let's go through some of the uh, the names that make sense on the ads side. Uh, those guys on the Celtics are not the regulars, what you'd say. It's Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard because with the Celtics playing two back-to-backs over seven days, Porzingis still isn't back. You know Horford is going to sit two of those five. Uh, you can probably bet that Drew Holiday, uh, basically all of the starters are probably going to sit two out of those five games because the Celtics are way out in front of everybody else in record. So you're going to get at least two and probably more like four out of the five good games from Hauser and Pritchard. Uh, because the guys, and, and if the Celtics last back-to-back is any indicator, they rested half of their starters in one half of the back-to-back and the other half of their starters in the other one. That was their Portland, Utah. Now, again, that was a tougher one because it was flying into altitude and losing an hour. But again, they, they have nothing to push their guys for right now. They can beat a lot of the teams they're playing without two of their starters. And then Hauser and Pritchard get to just drop in and get that bump up. So we're talking about probably four games of 25 to 30 minutes apiece for those guys. And then maybe one game where they get their more typical like 15 to 20 minutes. But that's fine. Effectively, you're getting like four and a half games out of dudes that are very much sitting on the waiver wire over a seven day span. That's great. Especially if they go big in any of them for the Pistons, probably rostered already because they've had a good schedule pretty much throughout Uh, Simone Fontecchio, Isaiah Stewart are the two guys that are streamer level on the Pistons. There are a few guys that are above that. There are a number of guys that are below it. And if you really wanted to go kind of dumpster diving here, if you can't get a Celtic or a Piston, then you go heat. That's the next one. Caleb Martin. Uh, they're rolling into a, uh, you know, back to back and a, and a, to, to front load next week, which is nice. And then you could hold through Wednesday or even Friday on Miami. If you wanted to go that far, that's also fine. Jaime Jaquez Jr. is on that board. Duncan Robinson's likely already rostered because heroes out indefinitely. So, uh, Caleb and Jaime are probably the ones and the Hawks who have a back to back and nothing else. Who? Nobody really. You're not picking up Krejci, who's going to lose a bunch of minutes because Jalen Johnson is back. You're not like Bruno Fernando is the closest thing you got, but uh, Clint Capella is basically revved up to normal minutes now, so that's not really all that useful. And for the Hawks, you just have, you know, four or five guys that are all the time startable and then a massive drop-off to anybody else. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Um, but, 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 I think that's basically it for today. If you want to look a little bit farther down the line and we'll take that image off the screen, I will now finally get the, uh, scheduling board up there because I biffed that earlier while arguing with a youth. Uh, there you go. There's the scheduling board. We'll make it bigger. 
Um, then I'll try to do a little bit of a scroll through here for folks that are watching while we talk about it. But again, if you want to look towards the future a little bit, again, I love the idea of going uh, kind of Boston or Detroit right now because that sets you up for most of next week without having to use a move next week. But if you're stuck doing something at the beginning of next week, Minnesota is a team that goes back-to-back to start the week but doesn't really have a good schedule after that. What you'd be looking for if you were making your move on Monday instead of today, and we'll do a streaming show tomorrow as well as uh, – that'd be a sort of streaming and a weekly preview is you're looking for guys that can give you three games over four days or more to start the week. Uh, those teams are Utah because they're finishing up a five and seven and they're in some pretty significant tank mode. Sacramento goes three times in four days to start next week. Again, those watching can see me doing the scroll and that's it. If you wanted to get four games in six days, believe it or not, your list actually gets a little bit better because a few teams have a back-to-back on sort of the tail end of that stretch, a Friday, Saturday back-to-back. So that now includes Boston, who we already talked about as a pickup today, um, on top of the uh, Sacramento, Utah, both those teams actually fit that mold. Portland goes back into having four games in six days because they have a back-to-back uh, on Friday, Saturday. And look, you have, we probably have a lot of Blazers rostered already. And uh, those are the teams that get added in. So that would be what you're doing tomorrow. If you have to make your moves a day ahead, those are the the directions you'd look there. But uh, we'll get into more detail on that on tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Kept this one uh, quick and uh, not all that clean. Um, None of you. (laughs) Oh, boy. Get it together, Dan. Um, Thanks for hanging out with us every day. Again, just trying to squeeze this thing in between other stuff on a Sunday morning. Good luck to you guys. Let's try to make it through to the next week. And we will see you tomorrow. Actually, I'll see you over on Twitter at Dan Bespris. Hey, check out our baseball draft guide and man, manscaped.com while you're hanging out. Ethos20 is the promo code there. You get 20% off and free shipping. At Dan Bespris on Twitter, just Dan Bespris if you're not an at. Uh, 